As of writing this, you can still listen to both Neil Young and Joe Rogan on Spotify, but according to a representative from Spotify, you won't be able to do this for much longer. The company has decided that they are going to be removing Neil Young's music after he complained about Joe Rogan. In a since deleted the letter that was originally posted to the blog on his website, Neil took aim at Joe and said, with an estimated 11 million listeners per episode, JRE, which is hosted exclusively on Spotify, is the world's largest podcast and has tremendous influence. Spotify has a responsibility to mitigate the spread of misinformation on its platform, though the company presently has no misinformation policy. I want you to let Spotify know immediately today that I want all my music off their platform. They can have Rogan or Young, not both. I am doing this because Spotify is spreading fake information about vaccines potentially causing death to those who believe the disinformation being spread by them. Please act on this immediately today and keep me informed of the time schedule. Then two days after this letter was published, Spotify notified the press of their intention to delete Neil Young's music from their platform. A spokesperson for Spotify told The Hollywood Reporter, we want all the world's music and audio content to be available to Spotify users. With that comes great responsibility in balancing both safety for listeners and freedom for creators. We have detailed content policies in place and we've removed over 20,000 podcasts episodes related to COVID since the start of the pandemic. We regret Neil's decision to remove his music from Spotify, but hope to welcome him back soon. But despite Spotify telling Neil they respect his decision and will always welcome him back, the feeling was not mutual. In a follow-up letter, Neil has dug his heels in more than ever and went on to claim that the youth are being led astray. In his second letter, Neil writes, Spotify represents 60% of the streaming of my music to listeners around the world. Almost every record I have ever released is available, my life's music. A huge loss for my record company to absorb. Yet my friends at Warner Brothers Reprise stood with me, recognizing the threat the COVID misinformation on Spotify posed to the world, particularly for our young people who think everything they hear on Spotify is true. Unfortunately, it is not. Now, in my last video, I mentioned that Neil may run into some issues with removing his music because he chose to sell off the rights to most of his catalog. Touching on this issue in his second letter, Neil adds, all my music is available on Spotify, being sold to these young people, people who believe what they are hearing because it is on Spotify, and people like me are supporting Spotify by presenting my music there. I realized I could not continue to support Spotify's life-threatening misinformation to the music-loving public. Before I told my friends at Warner Bros about my desire to leave the Spotify platform, I was reminded by my own legal forces that contractually I did not have the control of my music to do that. I announced I was leaving anyway because I knew I was. I was prepared to do all I could and more just to make sure that happened. I want to thank my truly great and supportive record company Warner Brothers Reprise Records for standing with me in my decision to pull all my music from Spotify. Thank you. And back in April of 2021, Joe was called out for discouraging young people from getting vaccinated, saying that if you were 21 years old, he wouldn't recommend it. When addressing the backlash, he said that he was not an anti-vax person and then added, I believe they're safe and encourage many people to take them. He then stressed that he is not a doctor and said that he's not even a respected source of information, even for himself. More recently, though, he faced immense backlash for having Dr. Robert Malone on his podcast who which, according to PolitiFact, Malone received a medical degree from Northwestern University in 1991 and specializes in immunology, according to his license with the Maryland Board of Physicians. He also branded himself as the inventor of the mRNA and DNA vaccines because of his contributions to important early research. A pair of papers he co-authored with two other researchers in 1989 and six other researchers in 1990 showed that mRNA could be delivered into cells using lipids and that doing so with mice could trigger the production of new proteins. The two papers were the first reference to a 2019 history of the mRNA vaccine technology. However, his opinions about what these vaccines could do to people in the future has caused the medical and media community to lose their ever-loving minds. I mean, Twitter banned him, and now people have set their sights on getting Joe Rogan removed next just for giving Dr. Malone a platform to speak on. I'd love to hear your thoughts on all this, though, because that's all the time we have for today. So stay classy, and I'll see you in the next one.